She says peace of mind is an inside job. Motivational life coach, teacher, and storyteller Gabrielle Bernstein is an extreme spirit junkie who is featured on the Forbes list of the 20 best branded women in North America. Her mission is to add more self-love and miracles to your life by teaching you how to let go of fear. And she's not talking about fear of spiders. Bernstein has a real deal spiritual plan and a 40-day guidebook called May Cause Miracles. Someone once called her the mistress of miracles. Stay with us and find out why. It is my pleasure to be here with you today and with the motivational, fearless and spirited New York-born Gabrielle Bernstein. She is a charismatic coach, a best-selling author and founder of a social networking site called HerFuture.com. If you see the world through dark colored glasses, Bernstein says you don't have to sit in a drum circle, do a fi fire dance or a rain dance, or meditate with a Zen master to clear some dreck and manifest some miracles in your life. She has a 40-day plan that may cause miracles wrapped in her new book. Miracles? Yeah. We like that, yes. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you define miracles? So a miracle is simply a shift in perception. It's the moment that we choose to let go of the negativity that we've been holding on to or release a resentment. And the moment that we choose to see things differently with a more positive perspective, that can be a miracle. Okay, I agree. Yes. Um, uh, did you always believe in miracles? No. The mistress of miracles. <laughs> I did not always believe in miracles. And I had a very different life. I was mm. really living in a much different way, looking for my happiness and outside circumstances and looking for my self-worth and my credentials or my relationships. And luckily for me, by the time I was 25, I hit a big bottom. And I think anyone that has had that experience of looking for their self-worth outside of themselves has those turning points where you say, this doesn't work. So take me back to the big bottom. Yes. Not literally. Yeah, well, but you yeah, know, it was... the big bottom in New York. You're in New York City. You're wearing the Manola Blahniks, the fancy shoes. You've got the good job, yeah. the hot boyfriend, going to all the clubs, and something wasn't happy. Wasn't working. It was, I looked outside and I had what seemed to be a, the necessary trappings for a happy life, but it wasn't. And I was really emotionally and spiritually bankrupt. And by the time I was 25, I just sat there and looked at my life and said, this isn't working. There has to be a better way. On October 2nd of 2005, I had this amazing turning point where I just said a prayer. I said, universe, God, whoever's out there, I need a miracle. This isn't working. And I woke up that next morning and had this really loud, authoritative voice say, get your life together, get clean, get sober, get, get, you know, get on the right path, and you will live a life beyond your wildest dreams. And was it easy? You know, I believe that change is easy when you want it. And so for me, all of the life changes that I have made, whether it was getting sober off of drugs and alcohol, whether it was becoming a spiritual student, whether it was th three months ago I got off coffee, which was another addiction, all of those changes have been a very, very effortless because they came to me at a time when I genuinely wanted them. So you got to want it to really mm -hmm. have change come through. Well, as you know, many people say they want it, but they still can't make it happen. I mean, yeah. who wouldn't like to be clean and sober and happy? Yeah. Yeah, well, well maybe the odd gin, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I think that we have those moments throughout our life where we kind of want it, we kind of want it, we kind of mm -hmm. want it. Sometimes we have to hit those bottoms, and a bottom isn't always a bad thing. A bottom can be a tremendous turning point and an amazing catalyst for radical change. So, you know, whatever the bottom may be, for coffee, it wasn't that low of a bottom, but it was just enough to say, this isn't serving me. I got to make a change. Sure. And, uh, we would not grow if the universe didn't send us bad stuff and right. good stuff. That's right, yeah. yeah. Lumps and bumps. That's right. Dreck. Yes, and to really receive those moments and those uncomfortable relationships or those obstacles as incredible assignments and opportunities for transformation and growth. When we start to see the problems in our life as opportunities for an, an experience of a miracle, mm -hmm. then it's a very different perspective. In your first book, you suggested we listen to our inner guide. Yes. Listen to our ing. Yes. What does that mean? So ing is what I would refer to as our inner guidance system. It's the voice of our intuition and our inspiration. And it's that loving voice within us that says, yes, you can make change. Yes, you can get to the gym. Yes, you can have that job that you desire. And all of my books, in a sense, are really about busting through all that's blocking you from really owning and accepting and heightening your connection to your ing. Sure, but we have many fears, as you know, yes. and that's what this book is about, uh, yes. dumping fear, yes. getting rid of fear of change and fear of death, 
fear of spiders too, even though I made a joke about it in the beginning. Yeah. Well, I think also fear of being great, fear of being loved, mm. fear of being connected. And we are, people walk around with fear as an epidemic. We, everyone's afraid of something. And fear really is the primary reason that people do not step into their power or step into their truth and really own what it is that they want in their life. Uh, Jerry Jampolsky, many years ago, uh, wrote a book called Love is Letting Go of Fear. Yeah. yeah. Where does love fit for you? Well, I think that in A Course in Miracles, which is the metaphysical text that mm -hmm. I teach, which is that really explaining that, that love is all that is real and that the fear in our life is really a false illusion. And I love that acronym, false evidence appearing real. It's a great way to really explain fear. And, and this isn't necessarily the fear of crossing the street because that's a just natural intuition. And that's actually your inner guide speaking sure. to you. But it's the fear that's keeping you in judgment and attack and attack towards yourself and the experience of lack and all of the littleness that we get stuck in. That is the fear that is based on all of the illusions that we've chosen throughout our life to hold on to. Why do we choose them? Well, we pick things up, you know, from adolescence to the present, we start picking up all of the energy of our family members, of the news, of our friends, uh, even just the energy in the air, we start to experience those, those imprints of fear, and that fear becomes our reality. And it's really a choice that we make. I believe that happiness is a choice that you make, and living a fear-based life is a choice that you make. And if you make that decision for fear, you really detour into fear. Uh, where does the ego fit in this? So ego and fear are really synonymous. The ego is that fear voice. The ego is that, and this, is, this isn't Freud's ego. This is an ego from mm -hmm. A Course in Miracles. Mm -hmm. From A Course in Miracles perspective, ego is fear. It's that, it's that limiting voice that keeps you stuck in separation. It keeps you seeing yourself as better than or less than. And all of those ideas that we place upon ourselves that keep us from really being in a place of genuine self-love, seeing people as equal, knowing that we are great, and really stepping into what is truthful and powerful for us. Uh, the ego might say, I, f I am great. I am love. I feel fabulous. I look fantastic. But inside, you don't believe that. It's one thing to say it externally. Yeah, there's definitely that other side of the ego that can sort of put on the air that this is all great, but there's something underneath it that is not and that is lacking. And so no matter how much you beef yourself up and say, I am wonderful, I am great, if there isn't a core belief system that is holding that within you, mm -hmm. then the world will feel that and it will be reflected back to you. Why did you write May Cause Miracles? I wrote this book because, I actually write all my books, Benny, because I listen to my audience. I really sp pick up on the vibe from the reader, and I get this intuition of what they need next. And I hear their call, and I kept getting these emails and Twitter posts and Facebook posts and messages on Instagram of people saying, teach me how to get over that romantic partner. Teach me how to lose this weight. Let, help me step into my power. I want to know how to do this. And so it was very clear to me that it was time to write a guidebook that was going to be very thorough and very specific and give people the daily right actions to take radical moment-to-moment -moment shifts. And that was my intention here, was to give people a handbook. And why 40 days? I know it's biblical. Yeah. So things in the Bible seem to happen in 40 days here and 40 days there. Well, I think all of the yogis and all of the metaphysicians mm. and even the neuroscientists are really behind the practices of 40-day programs. And 40 days is really the practice of creating a repetitive experience where you can make change stick. Um, your neural pathways are changing, and then that change can become permanent because you have made the daily commitment mm -hmm. to choose another way. And so that's why a 40-day practice is so powerful. And you know brain scientists tell us that uh, the brains definitely are, are uh, neuroplastic, that we can shape our brains. Our brains shape us a little bit, but we can shape our brains. So where do you start? So I believe that everyone has to begin from a place of being willing and every week has a different angle. So there's relationships and there's food and there's body image and all these different mm -hmm. areas. But I think that the main thing that happens on the first day of every week is opening you up to that experience of witnessing your fear and being willing to change it. And so my hope and my intention for the reader is that as long as you have that slight willingness, you can open this book and it will guide you. That's all you need. And one day at a time. That's right. That's right. And I think that the really important message here is that the subtitle of this book is it's a 40-day guidebook of subtle shifts for radical change and unlimited happiness. But the operative word is subtle. 
because you probably know this, you, you know, you can have quantum shifts, but we're not really experiencing mm. radical change overnight. We need to add up those subtle moment to moment new behaviors. And that's what this book will guide you to do. Well, it's one thing for someone to tell you, you should start to meditate. And it's another thing to be able to meditate. Yes. To get there, yes. wherever there is. Yes, there's or actually find um, your inner guide. I created a meditation album that accompanies this book. It's available on my website, gabbyb.tv. And um, it actually has been on the billboard charts for New Age. Isn't that wild? Like yeah. meditation albums on the billboard charts? I didn't even yes, know. Yes, that is wild. Isn't that pretty cool? So people right are up there really. With, uh, Sting and the rest. Exactly, I know, it's so cool. So what I have found that's been really groovy about that meditation album is that folks are being given the guide, the guidance, that they can listen to my voice, that I can lead them through some music, and that you don't have to figure out how to meditate, you can be guided. And that's a really nice way to begin a meditation practice. Okay, be guided, easy to say, but again, uh, do you have to sit in a special position? Do you have to sit in a dark room? Does it matter? I guide you through all of it. I guide you through all of it. I mean, you can sit. I mean, ideally, you're sitting in a quiet space that's comfortable for you, but you can sit on the floor. You can sit in a chair. And then just press play. I mean, it's really, once again, all you need is the willingness. Because if you're willing, you'll press play. You'll begin mm. the meditation, and the, the whole experience will be set in motion. But as you know, so many of us have hodgepodge brain, ping pong brain, yeah. Yeah. can't be still, yeah. don't know how to go inside, yeah. be silent, find... <clears throat> meditation Hope. is a disciplined practice mm -hmm. and it's not easy to begin people definitely start with that ping pong brain as you said right and uh, but the one thing that I can say is that if you want to live a miraculous life meditation has to be a priority and for me I'm now a certified teacher of Kundalini yoga and meditation mm. so I have really incredible practices that I I can't live without do you ponder questions like why am I here uh, not anymore no, I know why I'm here. Yeah, I think to that that's, teach. Yeah, and I think that as you and the neat thing about this book is that it takes you through the six weeks. Through once you get to the sixth week, you start to really start to intuitively know what you're here to do, because you've done all this work to really heal yourself. And then that voice of love comes forward and says, "Oh wait, this isn't just about me. This is about being of higher service to the world. This is about making sure I am helping the people in my family, in my community, in my office, on the street. That I am a messenger of some mm -hmm. kind." So, what does it feel like for you when you know you are in the right lane? It's amazing. This is how life is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. That life is supposed to flow naturally. Of course, miracle says that miracles are natural, and when they're not occurring, something has gone wrong. And so it just means that I'm in the flow with miracles and have a miracle mindset. And when you're in fear, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you have fear, I, of, of course, change, yeah. I mean, the ego doesn't go away. Fear of right? flying. Yeah, no, the, the ego doesn't disappear. It's just that mm -hmm. your experience of the ego changes, right? So you have this ego that's present, but you no longer believe in it. As you take a practice like A Course in Miracles or May Cause Miracles or Spirit Junkie, and you go through these practices and you make sure that these self reflective tools are a real pattern and a discipline, you begin to change your thinking and okay. you go from a fear based mindset to a miracle mindset and then you no longer experience your fear the same way. It's not what happens to you, it's how you think about what happens yes. to you. That's easier said than done too, yes. as you know. But uh, at one point in May Cause Miracles you say, think of this, all encounters are holy encounters. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, that means that every person you meet is offering you an opportunity mm -hmm. to heighten your faith in a loving experience. So you could have someone that's totally bringing up all of your stuff, that person that drives you crazy, that just pushes your buttons. But that person is your greatest assignment for spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. And so if we can see that encounter as a holy encounter, we can ask ourselves, what do I need to learn from this? rather than see it as a death sentence. <laughs> okay, so what I don't like in you, I don't like in myself. Yes, often, It's a mirroring thing. Always, when we are triggered by behaviors and other people, there is often that experience where we have to stop pointing the finger at others and point the finger back to us and say, what is it about me that's triggered? What is it in me that is upset about this? What do I need to heal? What is coming up for me? Okay, and when you talk about the F word, yes. it's not the bad one. No, it's the best one. It's forgiveness. Forgiveness, yes, that's right. When we come back, we'll talk about that. Uh, Gabrielle Bernstein, spirit junkie, motivational speaker, best-selling author, and keen bean fear buster is here, and we'll talk more after this.